I bet you 20 bucks this is gonna take all day. <laughs> this is a wonderful addition to the three rotor RX-7. As many of you know, obviously I love this car, I love this frame fully. So let's focus on restoring the car. I went on Amazon, this is not a paid ad, and bought $144 worth of carpet. As you can tell, the carpet in this car is atrocious. It does have all the black interior, at least the interior that is still in the vehicle, except for the carpet. Look at how horrific this stuff is. It has not aged well at all. We'll look at removing everything to get this car to a beautiful looking status with my new carbon fiber interior and the rest of the black interior. Let's see some before and then we're gonna show you some after and we're gonna take you on that journey with a new GoPro camera from my point of view all the way through this whole horrific process. Beautiful. God, this like even shows how ugly it is. Uglier. Okay, so looking at it off camera, it looks like a lot is gonna have to come out of this car. Thankfully, it is more of a race car, so there is not a lot in here. Obviously, the door sills, weather stripping, the seats, we did weld in and there are no spiders left in there. I think part of the rear plastics, definitely gonna come out, the center console, and potentially the dashboard, which on this car, if the dashboard comes out, it's gonna be really nice for getting more clutter out from underneath there. A lot of the wiring, a lot of the heating components that are no longer needed because there's no control for it. All of that, time to get the GoPro to make it point of view. So, as many of you may know, I do not like GoPros at all. This is a GoPro 5 uh, Black. There's six and sevens and they all look exactly the same. If you look at low light comparisons, identical. Uh, I hate the battery life. I hate everything about GoPros, but that has ruined some of the point of view of this channel. So I'm gonna I'm gonna suck it up and just do it. Also, the audio is horrible, but I want you to see what I'm seeing. In this case here, we definitely need to remove the seats. It's like four bolts. That's easy. Jared, you wanna remove the all this stuff? This is teamwork. Oh, whoa! That's he just did some serious work that time. He's about the double amount of work he's ever done. Oh my god! Oh, that is not just the carpet's fault, that's just tons of shit <laughs> in the car. Okay, there's a little hook. There we go, there's a hook on these carpet pads that uh, I don't know if it's on the new one. We need 17 mil, 14 or 17 mil, four of them, and then the seats just pop out. Oh, this car's gonna look so good. Just this one upgrade, I think. There it is. We definitely need to learn how to weld because this is something we would have had fun doing, is welding the brackets for these seats in. That would have been a fun, fun task. Spare power line just running through the car. The GPS signal sensor for the AEM. You know what's sad about this chassis though? See that pad right there of four bolts? Yeah, yeah. He must have had some sort of half-ass roll cage in here before I ever had the car. The car's just completely rusted in that spot. I wouldn't trust bolting anything to those bolts. On the bottom side, they're just pure rust. I can't tell if I'm actually unscrewing it. I'm gonna guess, that was 19, I'm gonna guess 17. These are pretty sick because they actually have that square side so they don't roll away. There's a big benefit. You notice that this seat belt was, it's held into down here. The side belt makes sense, yeah, it holds to the ground, but the actual back belt goes up and then goes down. So if, if you were to like get in an accident in this car, it's not gonna hold you back, it's gonna hold you to the ground. Which part of your body would that break? Your, sp your <laughs> spine would like collapse in half. <laughs> Ugh. There are four seat bolts and then one extra bolt for the uh, harness. Okay. <laughs> I forgot. Rob Freddy, you beautiful piece of shit. Here we go. Look at how bad this is aged though. But yeah, that's definitely aged poorly. 
So there's six, four 14 mils for the seat, two in the front, two in the back. And then I think I tried being fancy and putting the actual belt away from those because I didn't want them messing with the, the seat. You can pull that pad off. Yeah. Yeah, I'll look at my gold card from Mylan, fancy. Thank you to Mylan for that. You know what's sad? I never got to use it. Because the car broke. <laughs> <laughs> hours upon hours of use. Definitely feel like a uh, videographer for porn. <laughs> like leaning over you, put my hands around you so I can get the shot. Getting the action shot, Rob. <laughs> yeah, getting the action shot. Blind. Blind guy. <laughs> okay, so the seat's ready, but then now we have two more. Uh, you have a, a one right here that flap up. That should be seven. That should be 17. That's uh, already loose. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. Both of those were loose, Rob. That says a lot about me sitting <laughs> with you recording. Priorities. Oh yeah. Look at this, so here's the four bolts that are the normal ones on the car. Those are OEM. I don't know what this is, but I don't... There's two of those right there, but then this, this plate thing here that's going on, all rusted underneath there. I wouldn't trust that plate for shit. Next step, I think should be the easier ones, is trying to take out this middle area. You know, like we'll take out as little as we need. The part that your hand's on, that area will need to go, I think. But definitely these two. This comes out with a couple pops, which I already knew because I uh, have all those wires running back there. It's like cheating, like using this thing. It speeds up way too much. There's some serious drama in the RX-7 community right now over this guy that's rebuilding these, it's like corn carbon or something like that, but he's knocking off other people's products. And the question is, if the OEM isn't available, is it okay for a, a guy to knock those parts off? You know, it's a good it's a good debate. Is it worth having somebody copy other people's products uh, when they're not being built or being built on time? That's, I don't have an opinion on that. These pop snaps on 20, 20 year old uh, plastic scare me. But now the question is, oh, I see some, some bolts back here. One, two, three. But to pull this, you have to pull this. So I'm going backwards. So this comes off. This is all broken. Again, I bought the car like this. This is all stuff I did not do. So I, you understand why I have a little bit more contempt for the vehicle, because I got it in a mediocre state. I'm not gonna lie, this is like super therapeutic to work on. It's kind of intimidating at first. Yeah, I was, I was in the, well, whatever it's gonna take mindset. Clarion, did not know whatever this is existed. You know this, this arm exists. Clarion must have been the stock sound system, but it, the, it said uh, Bose. Maybe Clarion was the base model and Bose was the uh, upgraded version. Look at all this extra service loop that they left in the car. Way too much. First thing I want to remove is this little thing. 1980s calling right here. This is the same thing I pulled out of the Diablo. <laughs> Drilled piece of metal sound system. So we're gonna definitely need this bracket. This isn't a uh, thing that's removed because that's what holds that whole center piece in. But it's neat because that was loose and I wondered why the whole center console was loose. So, off camera, I went and popped this because that was in there. So, there must be some sort of poppy thing there. And if anybody wants to grade me on all the wiring, uh, this actually was not done by me. What was done by me was this one red wire underneath me. But you, might, you guys might have noticed that in one of our dyno videos, that was ran as an uh, emergency to make sure that the, the kick ass new alternator gave tons of power to just the fuel system. <laughs> is that it? That is it. 
hold on here, say. Jared. Did you know what a 2 plus 2 version of the ARC-7 was? An ARC-4? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that seems so scripted. <laughs> do you notice what this spot could do? That could be a potential seat. Yeah. They sold, uh, even the Spirit R has a version B or version C, one of the, I think both of those, uh, are 2 plus 2. These rears actually ha came with seats. Rust on the chassis again. See that? This was a New Jersey car long before it was even in Michigan, and I never drove it in the no weather. So, we clearly see the back edges of the carpet. Does that door sill come up on your side? Something that bothers me, it's not on your side. These should pop up. We might want to reuse these, not the, the actual staples themselves, but they were holding this carpet in. Obviously, the previous owner used it as a channel for their uh, wiring, but on my side, that's still intact for the most part. We definitely need to remove the dashboard. What do you think? <laughs> We're gonna have to, unless we just uh, cut it and then you know duct tape it in. <laughs> <laughs> Don't suggest ideas like that to me. Okay, that's off. Come on, baby. Here are my uh, Rob made pins. They were they work really well. So I'm a little worried, I'll be honest with you, because this was one of the most difficult things to wire, putting the air fuel ratio, because not only is this a gauge, it's actually the controller for the, the AFR meter. So the whole uh, sensor that's at the exhaust is in here. So even the this, this signal wire from the Adaptronic comes from here. Yeah, there's the controller unit for the DEFI gauges. Uh, this all comes out pretty easy. Oh yeah, that was, I forgot I didn't hook it back up. Look at that chunk of thing. Okay, do you think that taking these two off is gonna give us everything we hope for? No. <laughs> <laughs> you pessimistic piece of shit. Wait, the whole thing kinda sagged. No way. Oh yeah, way. No way. That's my way. No freaking way, dude. Oh dude, <laughs> it's happening. Oh, that one's just loose already. See, it does sink a little bit. Totally has to be something in the middle. So the issue right now isn't whether or not we can get it out. The issue is for the sake of this video, we've got all this custom wiring that doesn't really apply to anybody else's car. Uh, that's a project all by itself, so we can do that as a separate video. But what we're gonna do is, basically lift it up and uh, work around it for the moment for the carpet and then attack this separately. Cause it's, it's actually far enough, I think it's far enough up to uh, continue with the carpet. This must be where it's like to have kids. What? Nothing. Oh, that carpet. And it looks pretty good. Yeah. Random ass plates out. We have to cut this section of the unibody out and reinforce it. I wouldn't trust my life on this stuff. Oh, rust on the carpet. Look at that. Look at that rust. That's just a hint of how much rust this car has. I don't know what sort of monsoon covered in salt the previous owner drove this car through, but it is rusted all to hell. I don't know if this is like going to be a roll cage, like a half loop, and he stopped, or he used to have one in there and sold it. I'm not sure what the, what the deal is. There we go. Now it's time for the carpet. Here is the moment I've been waiting for. Not everybody's been waiting for, but I've definitely been waiting for pulling this whole thing off. I now see why they included those. I was wondering why that was included. Whoa, did 
There's tons of crap down there. We've got just all the spare random wires out of the way. What I think I might do is actually cut. I'm gonna take a shortcut and cut down the spine. I'm just gonna get a good grip on it and then just kind of pull. Okay, so I, I cut the carpet down the middle and that's giving us a very easy advantage here. But I'm just still blown away that the carpet wants to separate from the backing in certain areas, but not all. Oh. <laughs> that is out. Somehow the fabric is rusty. <laughs> the car's so bad, the fabric rusted. Look at how bad the car is, though. Look at this. That's not a seat mount. It's just a random spot on the car. What the hell is this? Look at all that. That's just bad. That leaves very little to the imagination for this side. Oh, that's not looking good, Rob. <laughs> this is... Oh, man. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Holy shit. That actually scares me. All the obvious reasons. It's out. God, this car is covered in rust. This is why when you see all the videos of me treating it decent, but not perfect, look at the base. Look at what I had to start with. That's a thousand horsepower chassis right there. <laughs> Whatever pulls, pulls. That's something. There's a lot of rust, even on the inside channels. Shouldn't even, those aren't even on the outside of the car. You wanna see something that really makes my fears a little bit worse? Watch this area right here. That's super safe. See, Jared just cleaned all that up, the floor pan. Uh, is not connected to the internal brace right here. Uh, that is not good. Now, the, the interesting part is this area isn't necessary for the person. These are, and those are safe. But it's the area underneath the seat that, oddly enough, is really, really bad. So not only that, but remember how I was telling you that that custom <laughs> roll cage setup over here? Look at that. Bolts were, well, one of them was right there. That's super safe. So the rule of thumb here is do not buy a car from the northeast anywhere that uses salt for the winters. <laughs> I'm actually using this in an intended use, kinda. <laughs> it's PB blaster, but I'm not blasting. I'm I'm gent I'm gently <laughs> dripping it on the areas that have rust. And the reason why, oddly enough, I'm doing this partially to be funny, but partially uh, the bolt holes such as the ones that hold the seat in. Uh, I want to make sure that those are nice and lubricated. What's deceiving is this pad of whatever rubberized like sound mat deadening stuff is sitting on top of the actual metal. So you can see the edges right there uh, are all rusted. Now this is the first time the passenger is actually safer than the driver in this car because the driver's got all that metal missing underneath him. Uh, we have a bit of an issue. Jarrett is so in love with the M18 drill that he's begged me to let him do this. That actually worked really well. I know that the original goal of this video was to install carpet in here, but I just sat down and looked at this, and guys, this is just asking to get myself into a very dangerous situation. I cannot ignore that. But if I want to just ignore that one, well, I've got two whole spots. Look at that. That's what you expect on a clapped out like 74 Repu, which I did have, and you could see the ground. That's just dangerous. I am, I have, I have a really high tolerance for <laughs> driving things that are dangerous, but this is just foolish. So these are all the seat mounts that are just gonna rust through given enough time. It's already done. I, I need to fix this. We addressed it with the wire wheel, but we need to cut out the bad parts and fix all that. So the next episode is going to be really addressing the rust. 
on a car like this and getting back on track to install the interior.